BBC proudly presents... A digital widescreen radio production in 3D and smell vision The newly discovered casebook of Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> the journal of Dr. John H. Watson. Private medical consultant to the nobility, a part-time lap dancer, and author of the bestseller, With Friends Like Mine, Who Needs Enemas. <laughs> I am also the colleague of that renowned amateur sleuth, Sherlock Holmes. Genius, master of disguise, and toffee-nosed punts. <laughs> because I shared lodgings with Holmes, I invariably became embroiled in his numerous investigations, many of them quite bizarre. One such case involved an encounter with a fiend known as the Demon Cobbler of Greek Street. <laughs> it began one Boxing Day evening. Our housekeeper, Mrs. Hudson, had invited us down to her parlour for some hot punch, mince pies and a magic lantern show. And this last one was taken by my late husband of me on the donkey rides at South Bend. Mm. <laughs> nice ass. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> of course, I was a lot slimmer in those days. I was referring to the animal, Mrs. Hudson. <laughs> it's an ass, not a donkey. You can tell by the ears. Oh, well, I wouldn't know. All I know is you could hire one on the beach. Yes, with the aid of a little screw under the saddle, I believe. But, uh, have you no shame, an old joke like that? It is not an old joke. This is only 1893. It's still brand new. Oh, oh, sure. Well, thank you, Mrs. Hudson, for the lantern show. Most illuminating. <laughs> Most illuminating lantern show. I've got a million. Now, sorry for that impromptu display of levity. I'm still full of the Christmas spirit. Overflowing, I'd say. I have got some more slides I can show you, oh. taken when me and the old man went on a whelk gathering weekend. <laughs> In Freedom. Uh, no, please, please. Please don't go to any trouble. I don't think I could stand the excitement. Uh, that magic lantern is a most handsome piece of apparatus, Mrs. Hudson. How did you come by it? Yes, yes. Did you pick it up cheap in a handsome cab boot sale? Oh, no, no. It was my old man's. He used to go from town to town giving illuminated lectures until he got raided by the filth. <laughs> really? I feel a feed line coming up. <laughs> what happened? Well, he was at the Ipswich Picture Palace to present a programme called Swan Up In On The Wirral <laughs> with sepia plates and dioramic dissolves, but the shop had given him a collection just smuggled in from France called Naughty Nuns Bear All. <laughs> well, the sight of all them knobbly ankles caused a rum old riot. Next thing, the local vice squad was all over the place. I knew I shouldn't have asked. <laughs> oh, that sounds like the police. Uh, have a look through the curtains, Mrs. Hudson. Oh, yes, it is the police. Inspector Lestrade's coming up the steps. I'll go and let him in. Oh, well, Lestrade is paying us a visit, eh? Scotland Yard must have another difficult case on their hands. <laughs> Evening, gents. Oh, Lestrade. I'm sorry to interrupt your Boxing Day revels. Oh, I see you have a magic lantern. The wife and I had ours out on Christmas Day. Really? <laughs> Mind you, I don't care much for the slides we got this year. Swan up in on the Wirral. I mean, really. What is your business here, Inspector? Oh, yes. You are no doubt aware of the gibbet outside Newgate Prison. It still stands as a reminder of those barbaric days of public hanging. Oh, yes. The last time it was used officially was for the execution of Rudyard Twanky, the pantomime dame strangler. <laughs> That's the one. That's him. Well, some fiend has put it to use again. Oh. Earlier this evening, a patrolling bobby found not one, but two bodies hanging from it. Good Lord. Normally, I wouldn't bother you with a run-of-the-mill case such as this. Watson, get your coat. Here, what about the slides of me and the old man Welk gathering at Frinton? <sighs> later, Mrs. Hudson, much later. Don't wait up for us. We could be some time. Uh, Watson, where are you going? Uh, upstairs to our apartments to get my coat and scarf. We have no time for that. Put on Mrs. Hudson's outdoor garb, which is hanging here, just inside the front door that Lestrade is now opening, in order that we may exit into the street. I think that's painted the necessary verbal picture there, don't you?
You must prepare yourselves for a grisly sight, gents. By Jove, yes. A spectacle not exactly easy on the eye. This here is the Rosso what discovered the bodies. Evening, all. What's your name, Constable? Painting, sir. Constable Painting. <laughs> yes, I'm familiar with your work, yes, yes. <laughs> when I espied the honourable apparitions what confronted me, I blew my whistle for assistance. So you're not a constable, you're a whistler. <laughs> Is there something wrong, painting? You're staring at me. Why are you wearing a woman's house coat and that scarf? Ah, well, you see, we left in a hurry and my outdoor garb was upstairs, so but I was... But it isn't important. It is to me. I have my reputation to think of. I was in the Queen's Own, you know. Yes. <laughs> I rest my case. <laughs> Dr. Watson, would you examine the bodies? Of course. At Constable Painting, would you cut them down, please? What with? Use your initiative. Good idea, sir. It's got a serrated edge. <laughs> what are your first impressions? They're both dead. <laughs> Shall I give them the kiss of life, sir? I sometimes wonder what they teach him at Endon these days. <laughs> These men were dead before they were strung up on the gibbet. You see, that's why I brought my friend the doctor along with me. I knew his intensive medical knowledge would be invaluable to us. Note how swiftly he came to his conclusion. Mind you, the fact that one of the bodies has a dagger in his chest and the other one a meat cleaver in his back did help. Sharp observation, constable. <laughs> Thank you. Judging from their clothes and their gnarled, calloused hands, I would say they are manual workers. Look at the state of their teeth. Brown with rust. And the front ones, top and bottom, are worn down. Oh, yes. Rolled about by a lifetime of gripping nails between them. I've got it, Holmes. They were blacksmiths. Cobblers. It was a perfectly sound <laughs> suggestion. Hello, <laughs> Watson. They were cobblers. Ah, uh, how do you come by that conclusion? Blacksmiths use larger nails. The grooves in these men's teeth are too small. Well, I think that's enough brilliance for now. Any further mental exertion and I run the risk of a brain fag. Thank you, gents. I'm indebted to you for your assistance. Constable, you better put a cordon round the area. Yes, sir. We don't want any curious onlookers or passers-by contaminating the scene of the crime. Exactly. Excuse me. Who are you? I was a passerby, but now I'm a curious onlooker. <laughs> My name is Sigourney. Who are you? And are them dead bodies? You can answer those questions in reverse order. It is of no concern of yours, madam. Be off with you. I have every right to be here. I am president of the local residence association. <laughs> association committee. Do you live in this area? Just over there, Osipa. Above the horse meat shop and massage parlour. Oh, I see. And uh, how observant are you? As a newt by the smell of <laughs> An Ed scarf. <laughs> Are you one of them spring vestites? <laughs> well, have I had one too many? Mr. Stroud, might I suggest you allow Sigourney to have a look at the corpses? I've been through their clothing and there's no ID on them. There is a possibility she might know them. Very well. Shine your torch on their faces, Constable. There. Do you recognize them? No, sir. I've never seen them before. <laughs> Not you, Constable Painting. This woman here. Strap up. I do know them. It's the cobblers Sylvester Pallone and Leonardo de Capricorn. <laughs> they run a shoe repair business in St. Paul's. I take my stilettos there to be done. And did you see them suspended from the gibbet when you came out this evening? Do you think I wouldn't have noticed a pair of dangling cobblers, I suppose? <laughs> dear reader of this journal, 
Having got the lead we wanted from Sigourney the inebriate, Holmes, Lestrade and I made our way to the repair shop owned by the two horribly deceased cobblers in the hope that we might uncover some clues as to the reason for their ghastly demise. Uh, oh, nothing but a load of insoles. What? <laughs> in this drawer, Watson, just insoles and leather heels. Here's something. An invitation to the annual Cobblers' Convention and Dinner Dance. Let me see. Music provided by Dolcis and his debonairs. <laughs> Tuesday, 27th of December, Empire Ballroom, Knackers Yard Terrace, Shoreditch. <laughs> Female companions permitted. Well, I know of two members of the Shoe Repairers Fraternity that won't be attending. Damn shame. Such a waste of a ticket. Just what I was thinking. Perhaps we should use the tickets. The invitation states... Female companions permitted. That means four people will be able to gain entry on this ticket. Smart thinking, Watson. You and I shall go as cobblers, and we shall take Mrs. Hudson and Lestrade as our partners. I beg your pardon? Female partners, of course. You will be dressed as a woman, Lestrade. Mrs. Hudson will have to do the best she can. <laughs> Holmes? Yes? I have something here in my hand that I think you'll find of interest. Really? Yes. <laughs> now, watch yourself. It's, I'm watching myself. It's yes. heavy and I'm about to slap it on the table. Good God. <laughs> what is it? It's their ledger. Ah. It's all quite simple bookkeeping, really. The left-hand pages note the income of the business and the right-hand pages the outgoings. By all accounts... Uh, did you spot my little pun there? Yes, yes. By all accounts, the cobblers had a thriving business. Profits were most sound. But look at these outgoings. On the first day of every month, a payment of 20 guineas, regular as clockwork. Until three months ago, that is. Well, perhaps it's the rent on these premises. No, that's this entry here. Paid on the last day of every month and named as such. Rent, ten guineas. Thank you, Gordon Brown. Who's he? <laughs> what point are you trying to make, Watson? Beside each of these payments of twenty guineas are the letters T.S., then in brackets, P.M. Oh, not more initials. Why do so many of our cases involve initials? Now you're going to tell me P.M. stands for Professor Moriarty. Honestly, Watson, that's so obvious... Boring. Uh, no, 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 not this time, Holmes. I think PM stands for protection money. Oh, it's possible. Thriving businesses are easy pickings for felons. Demanding money with menaces is a lot easier than a burglin. Yes, but what does TS stand for? TS. <gasps> Perhaps they had a cat. It's for the cat food they bought. Tiddle sustenance. <laughs> Perhaps T.S. stands for total schmuck, which is what you are, Watson. And someone else agrees with me. No, it was my mobile. Oh, Oh, yes, your mobile speaking, Joe, yes. Hello? I just thought I'd remind you I'm still here. Yes, yes. I'm aware we've neglected you somewhat, but have no fear. You are about to play an important part in this case. Oh, yes, how? Tomorrow, you will be accompanying me to a conference and dinner dance for the shoe repairers of Great Britain. Cobblers. Yeah, we've already done that one. Well. <laughs> now, that's what I think of your invitation. Cobblers. Ungrateful moo. Falsified pillock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good to talk, isn't it, eh? <laughs> Watson, where are you? Uh, here, Holmes. Uh, I've just been having a look in their living quarters. They certainly were doing well. Really? They've got two magic lanterns. Brand new deluxe models, too. Mm, most interesting. Come in, Mrs. Hudson. Aren't you too ready yet? You're taking more time than a couple of units in a harem. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Hudson. That pearl of devastating wit... Shouldn't you be getting ready for the dinner dance? Cheeky beggar. I am ready. This is what I'm wearing tonight. Oh. Inspector Lestrade is... ...downstairs. I'll tell him you're on your way. 
That woman's changed her tune. Yesterday, she was most contemptible of your suggestion that she should accompany us this evening. Yes, there's a price to pay for her assistance. When this is all over, we have a lantern show of her wealth-gathering weekend in Frenton to look forward to. Oh, dear. Come along. We mustn't keep the inspector waiting. Sounds like the knee's up's already in full swing. Look, can we go in? I'm gagging for a pint. <laughs> me, 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 pa, 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 pa. What are you doing, Lestrade? <laughs> Just preparing myself for my portrayal. I my seam straight. <laughs> Get in there. Tickets, please. Certainly must. There we are. Are you the cabarets? Cabarets do what? You're late. No must, you misconstrue. I am Xerxes Sprouts, travelling cobbler and last. And this is my good lady wife, Fafani. I am his good lady wife, Fanny. For Fanny. And yes. this is my husband, Xerxes Sprouts. I'm his wife, you know. All right, beloved. There's no need to build your part up, girl. <laughs> and I am Xerxes' business partner yes. and fellow travelling cobbler, Hieronymus Brogues. <laughs> This is my common-law wife, Sharon. <laughs> Charmed, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, well, the guests are getting restless. A cabaret was built to start 15 minutes ago, so if you take up your position, I'll introduce you. Better humour him, Watson. He's obviously senile. You can accompany me on the piano. smiling faces. What a load of jolly old cobblers. And <laughs> having exhausted all the possible permutations of that joke, I would like to sing you this plaintive ditty. Thank you. But Sarah, Sarah, sitting in the shoeshine shop. All day long she sits and shines. All day long she shines and sits. Sarah, Sarah, sitting in the shoeshine shop. Basking in the glory. <laughs> Mr. Sprout, may I congratulate you on a most edifying performance. Thank you, Squire. Yes. Allow you to present you with my card. Oh, I just done my bifocals here. Tweeny sod. <laughs> a demon cobbler of Greek Street. I'll save your souls. <laughs> a Clever play on words, don't you agree? May I join you and your guests? Well, of course you may, Mush. Perhaps you'd like to join me and my guests. <laughs> He's our bay at this table. This glamour puss here, rinsing her teeth in a glass of baby sham. <laughs> is my good lady wife, for Fanny. I miss for Fanny, you know. Yes. <laughs> I just told him that, beloved. Mm. You'll have to excuse the missus. She used her ear trumpet to unblock the sink and it's left it sticking out of the plug hole. <laughs> Aren't you going to introduce me to this important-looking gentleman, Xerxes? Oh, well, of course, my dear. This is Tweeny Sod. <laughs> Mr. Sod, this is Sharon Bruce. And her old man, Hieron 
Hieronymus Bruce. <laughs> my partner. Charm. Oh, yes, tweeny sod. We've had you under surveillance for some... Um, <laughs> Reputation goes before you, Mr. Sod. I'm deeply flattered. Oh, the Gay Gordons, my favourite dance. Uh, mine too. <laughs> yes, I thought it might be. I think I'll sit this one out. Yes, me too. Me throbbing has started again, you know. Your war wound, is it, sir? Yes, I caught a packet at the front, you know. <laughs> Well, you soldiers on leave were none too choosy, none were you? <laughs> yes. Mrs. Sprouts, Mrs. Sprouts, would you do me the honour of having this dance with me? Oh, I'll give it a go as, as long as the elastic in my drawers holds out. Do you think it wise to allow Mrs. Hudson to consort with the likes of that man, Holmes? I don't trust him. Neither do I, Watson, which is why our faithful housekeeper can be the bait to catch the rat. Inspector, you said you had Tweeny Sod under surveillance in a careless moment, I might add. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. We think the cobbler shop in Greek Street is just a front for a more sinister business. Lestrade, we can't be overheard. You can drop the voice. Not in these undergarments, I can't. <laughs> So what sinister business are you referring to? Blackmail? Extortion? Pornography! Oh. The illegal distribution of... <coughs> Salacious lantern slides. <laughs> we had a collection fall into our hands the other day. Well, words fail me. Naughty nuns bear all. You've never seen so many naked ankles. Disgusting! <laughs> Has it not occurred to you that the initials in the ledger T.S. undoubtedly stand for Tweeny Sod? Ah. The person the hang cobblers were almost certainly making regular payments to. I think we're on to our man, Lestrade. Uh, there's the drinks, waiter. Does anyone fancy some libation? I see Watson has his priorities in the right order, as usual. Waiter, I'd like a port and a lemon, please. And a synatogen on the rocks for me. <laughs> What about you, Zax? I'll have a glass of absinthe. It's good for the ticker, you know. Good for the ticker? Oh, yes, you know what they say. Here it comes. Absinthe makes the heart grow fonder. <laughs> Dear reader of this journal, following a joke like that, downhill was the only direction that last scene could go. And so we move hastily on to the climax of this case. Mrs. Hudson certainly made an impression upon Tweeny Sod, and before the evening had come to an end, they had exchanged speaking tube numbers. <laughs> when Holmes and I arose the next morning, Mrs. Hudson had already left the house. If only we'd known where she had gone. So, anybody there... Sorry to have kept you, madam. I was just out the back seeing to the return of a faulty consignment of hush puppies. Why, what's wrong with them? They're too loud. <laughs> what can I do for you? I'd like to see Mr. Sod, please. He's doing a very special order for me. I'm afraid he's too busy right now. But not too busy to see you, Mrs. Hudson. Look, sir, Matthew, it's Professor Moriarty. What have you done with Tweeny Sod? My disguise must have been better than I thought. Mrs. Sprouts, would you do me the honour of having this dance with me? Oh, oh dear, the master's showing off again. <laughs> Saints preserve us. Are you saying I did the gay Gordons with you? Got it in one hand. Gordon? <laughs> the kettle on. Mrs. Hudson would like some tea. Oh, uh, no, no, I can't stop, I'm afraid. But I'm afraid you'll have to. You see, I can't let you go now. You've uncovered my little secret. And yes, this gun is loaded, and yes, again, I will shoot a woman if I have to. I'm the embodiment of evil, totally without scruples. Yes, all right, I get the message. You spelt it out often enough. Uh, let's see how cocky you are when you've been deprived of that precious home cooking of yours. After you into the back room, dear lady. If Mr. Holmes was here, he'd But he isn't. Gordon, tie her to that chair, then gag her. Damn, never mind, I'll do it. You can attend to the customer. 
Yes, sir. Can I help you? To be sure, I'm hoping you can, DJ Evers. <laughs> I come to collect a pair of wellies I left with you last week, to be sure. What was wrong with them? Well, they were brand new indeed, they were. But when I bought them in the shop here, they were tied together with a little bit of string, so I brought them in here to have the string removed. <laughs> like I did say, they kept falling over, sir. <laughs> What name is it? Brendan Gora, sir. Strange. There's no record of it here. Yes, there is, sir. Look. B. Gora. Yeah. <laughs> no, it isn't. You're making it up. Well, I thought I'd better explain me little joke, sir. Little being the operative word, dear, oh dear. Surely you can do better than that, Mr. Holmes. Moriarty. Another excellent disguise, Mr. Holmes, but not convincing enough. In the back room, if you please. Is there no end to your fiendishness? No. Or is the word fiendery? I must remember to look that one up when I get it. <laughs> Good Lord, Mrs. Hudson. Mr. Holmes, he's got you too. How did the devil did she say that? She's gagged. Well, <laughs> well you know. <laughs> Nothing will stop her chattering, I assure you. <laughs> Never mind, this pistol will. And after you've watched her die, it'll be your turn. I'm sorry our many years of sport must come to an end, Sherlock Holmes, but I have to make a living at the RSC. <laughs> All right, Tweety son, this is a police raid. Constable, break the door down. Curse that interfering fool. Goodbye, Holmes. Yeah. Mrs. Hudson, what are you doing here? And who are you, you mad stereotype Irish person? Never mind all that. Moriarty's making his escape. Get after him. Get after him, chap. Holmes, is that really you? Yes, it's me, Lestrade. Oh, Mr. Holmes, you was ever so brave. Kicking the gun out of Moriarty's hand like that. I thought we was gone as I really did. For once you were correct in your suspicions, Lestrade. Moriarty was conducting the most lucrative trade in film. That's what PM stood for. Porn merchant. Oh, I say. So the two cobblers were buying the obscene lantern slides from Moriarty in his guise as tweeny sod, then selling them under the counter to their male customers. Precisely. And if you make further inquiries, I think you'll find Moriarty had a whole network of bent cobblers distributing his profane material. Well, so why did he kill the two cobblers you found yesterday? You remember the two magic lanterns we found in their living quarters, Lestrade? I do indeed, Mr. Holmes. I wanted to have a look at them and discovered a gas-operated copying lead connected to each lantern. <laughs> They were using the two lanterns to duplicate the pornographic slides themselves, thus depriving Moriarty of his income. And as we know, the professor isn't the sort of man to take that lying down. Well, I think that's everything. Oh, no, it isn't. Moriarty had a Scottish assistant named Gordon who's buggered off. <laughs> oh, we caught up with him in Mincing Lane. Yes. <laughs> and we'll get Moriarty, have no fear. Perhaps it would be just as well if you don't. Why do you say that? Well, if we get another series, we'll need him, won't oh, we? Well, yeah. And this is a slide of my old man displaying his prize whelk, what he just pulled out of the Frinton Sands. Well, most impressive, Mrs. Hudson. Well, I think I'll turn in. Oh, it's only half past seven. I still say it was very foolhardy of you, Mrs. Hudson, to take matters into your own hands. Well, I wanted to be of some help, seeing as how I thought Tweeny sort had taken a shine to me. Of course, if I'd known he was really Professor Moriarty, well... I commend your vigilance, Mrs. Hudson, but not your stupidity. Uh, one thing puzzles me, Holmes. What's that? Why did Moriarty string up the two rogue cobblers outside Newgate Prison? A high-profile public execution is a warning to any other of Moriarty's customers with similar ideas. Uh -huh. Well, you lot finish gassing, because I've got another box of slides here. Oh, God. Yeah. After you with the popcorn, Lestrade. Oh. Now, this one is a... That's funny. I don't remember visiting no convent. Try <laughs> <laughs> oh, another one. Oh, oh. Uh... Naughty nuns bear all. <laughs> Mrs. Hudson, I'm arresting you on a charge of... Let's start. Shut, shut up. up. Oh. Next one, Mrs. H. Right. Oh, oh, dear, 
red gold. Look oh. at the ankles on that. <laughs> That was the newly discovered case book of Sherlock Holmes. The part of Sherlock Holmes was played by Mr. Royston Hudd, Dr. Watson by Mr. Christopher Emmett. Mrs. Hudson and Sigourney the Inebrit were portrayed by Miss June Whitfield. Inspector Lestrade and Gordon the shop assistant were depicted by Mr. Geoffrey Holland. Moriarty, alias Tweeny Sod, plus all other characters were rendered in sunder by Mr. Geoffrey Whitehead. At the pianoforte was Mr. Barry Bignold. The dialogue was scribed by Mr. Anthony Hare and the entire extravaganza was produced by Mr. Christopher Neal. <laughs>